Shalom, shalom to every one of you, Ridgewood Baptist Church and family, wherever you are. My name is Jane Munio from the Counseling Ministry. And today I have with me my colleague, Wandia, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Wandia Karago, also from the Counseling Ministry. Thank you, Wandia. And today in our uh, uh, mental health segment, we are going to be talking about social disruptions and loneliness. And um, as we are, we are talking about this because of the COVID-19, and we are saying um, in a pandemic of this magnitude, and one that the disease is so contagious like the COVID-19, social disruptions, social change, changes are inevitable. And coming to this with this understanding will help us cope, will help us connect uh, with ourselves and friends, and will help us not being so lonely because we already understand why we are being isolated. We are not being punished. It's really inevitable. And so, Wandia, talking about loneliness, what exactly is loneliness? Okay, I can describe loneliness mm. as a feeling of sadness, yes. uh, as, as a feeling of emptiness that is brought about by mm -hmm. being socially isolated from That's right. loved mm. ones. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and, and so today, even as we talk uh, about that loneliness, uh, we know that uh, COVID-19 and the lockdown has really contributed to that, I would say. Oh, what do you think? It has. It has in so many ways because mm -hmm. we are now not able to visit our friends as we'd like mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. We're not able to attend uh, social gatherings like church, yes. weddings. Yes. You can't uh, decide to call up a friend and have uh, tea yes. or coffee with them. Yes. Uh, we cannot go to the gyms mm -hmm. and try and uh, work out and be in the company of other people who are mm -hmm. also working out. So mm. it's kept us um, isolated and indoors and away from what we are used to. That's right, that's right. It's, it can really put someone down, whereby you know your weekends were full of events and activities and now you can mm -hmm. no longer even get out of the house to go and play a round of golf or just uh, go to the gym or just hang out with friends. A lot of us are chama guys, we want to go out for chamas with our lady friends and uh, the, the brothers go out for nyamachoma uh, and so they cannot longer do that and so it can be a difficult time. And so what are some of the things that we can do to help us cope uh, with this loneliness and this social disruption? What are some of the things that we can do to help ourselves and others? Okay, some of the things that we can do are uh, maybe trying to look for things that distract us, you know, positive distractions that mm -hmm. help us uh, stop focusing on how bad things look or yes. how lonely we feel. Mm. So you could pick out uh, distractions like uh, maybe learning a new skill. So you could mm -hmm. decide um, mm. if cooking is really not your thing, you could take that on and so you find your energies are being directed towards uh, cooking. Yes. Uh, you could decide um, your signing up for an online course that's and, uh, right it will mm. challenge you and mm -hmm. so you find that even as you prepare for the assignments and the classes that's a distraction that's positive and so you find that you're now not preoccupied with those feelings of loneliness mm -hmm. that's right in fact i picked one the other day i started knitting after 30 years and crocheting after 30 years and that has been helpful really just seeing the results of what i am doing and not feeling so clogged in or you know or locked in so that has been helpful and i think also again in terms of loneliness we need to encourage people to embrace solitude just being together with yourself solitude is a powerful place whereby you can begin to uh, uh, tap at the you know untapped potential and ideas that you have not uh, used for many years and skills that you have not used for many years, even when you are alone in the house. And again, talking about even uh, going to the gym, there are several exercises that one can, one can do indoors. And uh, YouTube is full of them, many. I do one every morning, and it's refreshing. Even when I don't have any other people in the gym with me, it's refreshing, and you're not feeling so clogged in. Uh, and I think solitude is a good place, and there are many, many activities that one can do, even alone, to avoid being lonely. As you said, reading a book, some people have kept their books in the shelves for years. And so this is a good time, you have so much time on your hands. So reading a book, listening to music is ever so therapeutic for me, even for other people. Just listening to good music and lying there meditating. And uh, med in meditating, we need to be careful what we are meditating on. 
a scripture, a psalm, a hymn. You know, it is said that um, when you sing and listen to music, uh, you hear the lyrics, but you don't really understand them. But when you sit down and meditate on those words, they can be refreshing to the soul, to the mind, and you begin to understand the lyrics of that song. Anything else to add on something else people can do? Mm. Um, we can also get um, like our creative juices out. Sometimes mm -hmm. some of us are writers, so we could That's right. encourage ourselves to keep a journal, a journal mm -hmm. of your thoughts. It would mm. be nice to see what your thoughts are like or feelings are like and put them down in a journal. That's you could right. also decide to, to be a, a blogger, maybe you're an expert in a certain area or you have interest in certain areas. And so you could be sharing your experiences with others on social media by running a, a blog spot. Mm -hmm. So we could use things like those. So there are so many things and so many outlets and so many channels. And uh, the other thing I was uh, thinking about um, is getting connected with our loved ones so that you don't shut yourself in and don't um, feel like you are all alone in the world. Getting connected with your loved ones is uh, going to be very important at this point, whereby there are so many forums on social media that allow us to be connected with our loved ones. There is a Zoom now. I'm attending uh, Bible study through Zoom. Uh, district fellowships, prayer fellowships, uh, getting together with my lady friends on Zoom. It's powerful and it's working wonders because we can see one another and we can talk and we can laugh. So it's become very interesting. And uh, somebody was talking about these social disruptions and social distancing the other day. And they said they went to a conference and they now want to change the term social distancing to physical distancing. Because really socially, we can be connected. But uh, physical disconnection is what uh, is the issue now. But if you can talk to your friends, your families, your loved ones, even those who are in abroad, or those who are up country, your grandma, give her a call. Your mom, give her a call. They also need reassurance that we are doing okay here in Nairobi. And uh, calls don't even have to be expensive these days. Call on WhatsApp is totally free. So you can call for a whole hour. You talk to your grandmother and uh, make laughs. And she will tell you about uh, stories of the old and that will keep you going. So we should not feel, be, feel clogged in or locked in or punished or isolated. There are so many forums that we can connect with our loved ones even at this time. And anything else you want to add to that? How yeah. can people really stay connected? Okay, as mm. people stay connected, there's mm. one thing that we also need to, to think about uh, is trying to keep a positive attitude That's even right. during uh, mm -hmm. this period. And um, trying to, when you get overwhelmed by your lonely thoughts, yes. you can also choose what things that you're going to pick out because the social media, there's a lot of uh, sharing of uh, you know, the COVID cases uh, right. and the, mm -hmm. what the statistics are saying, and that could just continue to just take you round and round in those circles of yes. loneliness. Yes. So you must choose to, to keep a positive attitude, choose what are the reliable news sources mm -hmm. to, to listen to, and even tell yourself that I don't have to watch all the news briefs That's that right. are coming on our TV, on our local TVs, as well as the international uh, TV stations, right. and decide maybe I'll only listen to one or two, and then also listen to credible sources, like maybe the WHO and the That's CDC. Right. That's right, and also listening to tapes that have um, messages of hope there are many right, right now in the social media, songs, new songs, learning new songs, learning new hymns, that when we come back to church, we can, you know, sing out. I, I remember when COVID-19 started, that is uh, probably about the 13th of March. All I was doing is staying there on the TV and listening to how many people have died in Wuhan, how many people are dying in Italy. And I was thinking, my goodness, if these things come to Kenya, we are doomed. And that really discouraged me. So I think it's good to not to listen to all that uh, is being said on the social media. And uh, even if we knew what this disease does, what good does that do? Sometimes it just discourages us. And we are mothers and grandmothers and we need to encourage our children. And uh, talking about our children and uh, our grandchildren and all that, I think it's also a good time to have some good quality time with our families. Because life can be busy. You know, from the time you wake up in the morning, you are rushing to beat the seven o'clock jam. In the office, you are doing meetings and conferences. 
by five o'clock you are again rushing to beat the jam going back home you pick your children maybe from school or whatever transport they take to from school by the time you get home is cooking uh, shower uh, homework bed and the roller coaster starts tomorrow morning so I think this is a very good time to begin to connect with families and have those uh, meaningful conversations with our families, you know, that will enhance our, family, uh, our relationships at home and with our families. Getting to know uh, your children, what are they saying? You know, you, you, you now move from talking to communicating because those are two different things. Communicating with your families and hearing them out and understanding them, this is a good time. There are also many, many activities that you can do together. You can play games, uh, crossword puzzles. What other games can they play? One year you are the ones with young children. What other games do children and mothers play? Uh, 